Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, as you guys may know, my name is Zara. I'm the comms officer here at the Aziz Foundation. Um, and obviously, we run these webinars on a monthly basis. Sometimes we're super lucky and we get to fit two into one month. Yes. Um, but alhamdulillah, we're joined here today by Aisha Desai, who is the founder of Ramadan Night. Um, and hopefully she'll be joining us today to talk to us a bit more about her initiative, how we can all get involved, um, and hopefully tell us a bit more about the story behind such an incredible initiative. Uh, so before I begin, I'll give a bit of an intro into who Aisha is. So as I said before, she's the founder of Ramadan Nights, uh, but prior to this initiative, Aisha studied for her undergrad in Arabic language at the University of Manchester and previously worked at McGraw Hill Publishing, where she oversaw a key international project whilst working with the Dubai Ministry of Education. Uh, she is also the founder of Freedom Clothing, a social media savvy charity that uses youth culture led street fashion to raise money for humanitarian causes in the Middle East, which is obviously very noble, mashallah. Um, so, what we'll do is I'll hand over to Aisha, who inshallah will be able to tell us more about her project. Um, and then we will probably leave about 15, 20 minutes for a QA. But yeah, over to you, Aisha. <laughs> Thank you um, and assalamu alaikum everyone. Thank you for having me. Really appreciate it. Um, so yeah, I'm Aisha. I, uh, like you said, studied uh, Arabic um, and that took me to Jordan where I spent a year uh, kind of trying to learn uh, to actually speak the language rather than learn all the gr grammar and all the, the hard stuff. Um, so I spent about a year out there and really loved it. I immersed myself in the culture, met some really amazing people. Um, so I decided to stay on, um, did a lot of volunteer work, I was interning at the, the UN over there and spent a lot of time in Palestine. Um, and so I was lucky enough to spend two Ramadans in, uh, in Jordan and one Ramadan in Palestine. And um, I, it was my favourite favorite place to be, favourite time to be there. It was just amazing and I, I, it was just you know, it was so bright, it was lit up and it was bustling and it was exciting and, you know, families are out until late at night, you know, until Sahur time and eating together and it's just like, you know, as you can imagine Christmas in the UK around Oxford Street and Carnaby Street in London, I mean, it's that times a million. Um, the atmosphere is just, I mean, it's real, for me, a Ramadan atmosphere. Um, and uh, when I'd come back to the UK, um, I was always, I had said to my family on multi, multiple occasions, like we, I would love to have that feeling of, of Ramadan that I felt there over here. How can we replicate that? You know, given that we're not a Muslim country. Um, so the idea kind of came about from that, but also, you know, growing up in London, um, seeing Christmas lights everywhere, you know, my uncle would take us to, to Oxford Street and you know it would be like a huge trip for us and the, you know for the kids to go and um, we'd kind of put down the, the the seats in the car and you know just watch the lights from the roof and he'd drive all the way down Oxford Street and so that's a really fond memory of mine and again it was like why you know why don't we have this for for, for our religious you know festival our holy month um, so that's kind of where the idea came from and stemmed from um, and then this year um, I, you know, before had a lot of time to ourselves, to, <laughs> lots of, you know, reflection and thinking and, you know, just a, a lot of time. Um, so I thought, let me, at the beginning of the year, I thought, let me see what I can do and see if I can replicate this in some way um, and, and pilot it in an area that I'm familiar with. So I'm from North London. I was born and brought up in Finchley, a uh, gold is green. Um, very close to uh, the North Circular Junction, Henley's Corner Junction, which is where uh, the structure that we have um, we we have is that's where it's it's placed at the moment. Um, and so I kind of just started the process. Now, of course, there's um, it's quite a Jewish area where where I live, and they put a, a menorah, a Hanukkah menorah, a menorah up every year to symbolise Hanukkah. So, um, so I thought it's actually quite a beautiful thing, right, to share that space uh, with another community as well. So if they have their faith, we should also put up our faith um, in some way. Um, and I wanted to make sure that there was a modern twist on it. I'm millennial, I'm young, I'm Muslim. I would like to think I'm creative. Um, so, I, so I was like, I don't want to do something um, too tra traditional because that doesn't represent me and doesn't represent 
my, you know, the people that I'm around who are the young generation of Muslims. Um, so it was important when we had started the process for me to, you know, make sure that when we're looking for a design agency or, or uh, that, that we align on that. Um, and the other thing is I, you know, my whole life, I've always been doing a lot of NGO work and volunteer work and lots of work on the side. Um, and I always really wanted to represent our um, community and our religion and our faith in a positive light in the best way that we can because we have so much negativity um so i so yeah so that's kind of where the where it all came about i then um realized that to do this we need to make sure that we do this right and we do it the best way that we possibly can which means no cutting corners, making sure we seek the right permissions, make sure we have everything set out because we don't want any kind of, you know, like I said, negativity or bad things around it. Um, so the first thing I did was um, went to Barnet Council, my local council, and, uh, you know, I had to ring quite a few uh, people to get to that person to speak to, but I got there. You have to have that um I guess for me, it's a passion project. It wasn't, it's an ambition. And um, it was like, I'm going to make sure I get that person to speak to. So even if I have to speak to a million people, I'll make sure I find that, you know? Um, so, you know, sent a few emails back and forth. They were really supportive of the project. Um, not financially, I didn't ask them to support financially, but because I wanted it to be, a com at least for the first one, I wanted it to be a community-led project. That was important for me, that this is for the community, by the community. And um, so went to the council, um, they gave me the permissions, really smooth process. And then, um, and then, yeah, it just kind of started from there. So this was about the end of January now. Um, and um, then had to go and commission a design agency to help. I wanted the first one to be done by Muslims, um, creatives that happen to be Muslim. So this was a really great design agency based in South London that happened to be Muslim and were really cool, creative, young Muslims. Uh, you know, like I said, we we aligned in the, in, in the sense that we wanted it to be super modern, like really attractive and, and is reflecting Islam in a really nice way and in a modern way. Um, so there was a back, there was, you know, a bit of back and forth with the designs. Um, and, um, the backup option was some people that I don't know to come in and take pictures and stuff with their phones and videos. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I think someone's mic was on. It's all good. We're good. Please continue. Um, yeah. Yeah, so um, so that's can I can I share my screen in some way because I'll, yeah, I'll sure as I go along. Sorry, guys, apologize for my presentation. It it's very last minute. It's really bad attempts, but as long as it shows the pictures, that's the most important thing. I think you can do it. So I think do you see where it says uh, Mike video, like in the top right hand corner next yeah, to these? Okay. It should give you that. Can you see this? Yeah. Yay. Okay. Uh, right, so this, I don't know if it's going to open properly, possibly not, it's all going to be, uh, can you guys see this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so cool. I think if you put it into presentation mode, I think that should full screen it if you want. There we go, thank Yay. you. <laughs> no worries. Okay, so Ramadan Lights, London. <laughs> well, actually Ramadan Lights UK, by the way. So, um, sorry, so where was, I, where was I? Yeah, so permissions from the council, found our design agency, our, you know, the, other, the next part of the process would be to find a fabricator. Luckily for us, our design, um, our design agency, then they, they were called uh, Alma. They had, you know, they've done quite a few projects in the past. So um, they had their own fabricators. Um, fabricators meaning basically the guys who are building the structure and figuring out uh, what, like, you know, the, the types of materials that need to be used. They all need to be weatherproof. Um, so there's so much that goes into it that I had no idea, <laughs> I had no idea what, you know, like I'm a one man band here, right? I'm donating all my time and effort into this. So I had no idea what I was in for, but actually 
Alhamdulillah, uh, it worked out really well. We managed to pull something off, you know, something really great out within three months. So we found our fabricators. Um, of course, we needed the power supply because we didn't want it to be ba battery operated just because that requires a lot of maintenance. So um, I spoke to the council because I believe that the, the Jewish community, they um, have access to this power supply. So council gave that to us and it was, um, again, really easy and smooth process, thankfully. Um, Barnet Council were actually really amazing. Um, so um, got that and then uh, needed to start fundraising, obviously. So got all the quotes of how much it was going to be. So all in the project was about £16,000. Um, and that was basically quite literally from start to finish, from the designs to the fabricators to insurance to, uh, you know, there's so many bits and bobs that are involved in it. So um, we uh, needed to obviously fundraise this money. And like I said, I wanted it to be a community led initiative. So the community, community feel, a, feel part of it. So, you know, you're driving down and you, you've donated even if it's one pound, like I contributed towards this and this is part of me. Um, so um started up our gofundme page um and just started to send it out through to family and friends i'm familiar with north london i would like to think i know the north london muslim community quite well but actually it turns out i don't because i've met so many people by the lights who are local to this area who i had no idea about so it's it's just been such an incredible experience in bringing community together and um, the response, I mean, I, I didn't expect the response I got. And I'll, I'll speak about that um, a bit later. Um, so started off the GoFundMe page and um, yeah, literally started sending out through WhatsApp to family and friends and friends and friends and friends and friends. Um, and we, you know, alhamdulillah, we managed to raise about, you know, £4,000 within a few days, within, a, a, yeah, quite literally a few days. Um, and it kept on going, kept on going. Um, and then obviously needed to set up our social media channels to be able to push it out a bit more. Bearing in mind, I also work a full-time job uh, at a startup. So it's <laughs> the hours are also like quite intense as well. Um, so I'm really trying to, you know, push out these social media channels. I started with Instagram just because I'm the most familiar with it. I know Facebook, but um, I, it was just, it was a time issue. So what we what we've um accomplished now can be one million times better with more people on board you know a, a, a steady team um and a year a year of preparation um just bear in mind that this was done within three months uh, to be honest probably two um so and again just me so um you know it could have the reach could have been way more way 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 more than it was um so set up the instagram channel and started to just post um initially i didn't put my face on it just because i didn't you know i didn't want to put my face in it uh i again for me it was a community uh initiative i was just a facilitator um but everyone kept to say no i you have to aisha come on like you need to put your face up people need to understand and also understand why you're doing it what is it um and people relate to that more so that's when i decided to do that by the way i'm not a public speaker in any way <laughs> i i actually get really nervous but alhamdulillah you know i guess uh you learn these things as you go along um so started up the instagram page started posting and uh, luck, actually, I was very lucky that our, you know, the creative agency that we had used, they were um, kind of creating bits of content for their social media. So they were uh, sharing it with me that I was able to post because in no way am I a content creator. So, by the way, if there's anyone here that is, please join the team. That would be amazing. Um, and you have all the creative freedom in the world, by the way. Um, so, uh, yeah, started to create the content engaging the followers the followers started rising slowly uh but steady but also super super engaged which is the most important thing right you can have a million followers but they're not that engaged these guys have been with us since and we, we've had about 500 now again bear in mind i haven't reached out to many influencers other than friends um it hasn't been constant posting um it's all been just 
completely organic. So those 500 followers that we have, and hopefully, I don't know how many of you are on here, but it will be 500 and something <laughs> after this call. Um, uh, we, uh, sorry, I've lost my trail of thought there. Yeah, um, it, it could be way more, of course, um, but these followers are super engaged. So they were following from the very beginning. So I, it's almost like I took them on that journey with me and I was on that journey myself. So for me, it was the first time for all, you know, for everything. So um, it was really nice. And, um, you know, the messages along the way have been just so supportive. And like I said, the community are just, we have such an incredible community in the UK. Um, and we just need to, sh we need to show it. And for me, this is a way of doing that. Um, so, um, so yeah, so that's a, our social media channels, uh, more Instagram more so than anything. Uh, we had set up and we were just posting um, and then um, there were a few concerns that were uh, um, expressed along the way and that was um, you know the potential vandalism or the potential Islamophobic attacks or you know, you know things centered around that um, and uh, everyone was like are you worried about that are you worried about that are you worried about that absolutely we're all worried about that right that's something that as muslims in the uk of course but that shouldn't stop us from doing things uh absolutely not so for me it was like if that happens we will have to deal with it the best way we can but the only way for us to mitigate that is um, to make sure that our materials we're using if there is any graffiti or vandalism we can wipe it away easily which is what we did um i <laughs> i got a really well my brother got it for me it was a little like uh uh we're watching you sign with a smiley face so if anyone does go to visit the light you'll see it it's really small um but it's tied around the tree um you know and there's also there you know the synagogue has cctv and and in the middle of the road there's also cctv around that junction so if anything did happen we would have that on camera and we would also be able to show that but again, that's not something that stopped me for one second. I didn't think, no, hmm, should I do this? Should I? No, none of like these things shouldn't stop us. So, um, so yeah. And then, uh, of course, you know, the time came. It was the first day of Ramadan. Uh, well, it was the day before Ramadan. Um, the fabricators came to build it out. It took about uh, it was a whole day's work. It was about we were there from 10 a.m. to uh, 9 p.m. Uh, to actually build out the structure. Uh, then BBC came, which is where the BBC video came out. Um, and I just had my close family and friends there. And actually, my brother had said to me, Aisha, why don't, like, give a speech? You know, there were so many people that um, donated so much time and effort to support me in this project that I couldn't have done without them. And one of them was this really kind man called Mohammed Jaja, who's a, a local a parent from, from uh, one of the schools here uh, locally in, in Finchley. And... Um, Aisha, I think you've managed to mute yourself somehow. <laughs> oh no. Oh. I think if you stop sharing just for a second, um, and then you can, there we go. <laughs> Means I was talking too much, maybe. <laughs> mute yourself now. I highly doubt that. <laughs> Um, sorry, let me share this. Yeah, I think you can start sharing again. Right, okay. It's okay, Zoom's no one's best friend today, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, so, let, so then, yeah, we built it out and this is how it looks. Right, so let me share these two videos. This is a little uh, time lapse. Um, all from my iPhone, by the way. We are going to get this, oh. um, uh, we are going to get it um, shot uh, professionally, but uh, just... Uh, we're just figuring out timings and stuff for that before. So this is where it is. Um, by the way, it's it's really big. Like, um, it's really big, and anyone coming to see it, it's like I said, it's on it's on the A four hundred six North Circular, Henley's Corner, um, at a at the huge intersection there, and it's huge. Like, alhamdulillah, like you know, it's it's great. I didn't expect it to be that big, but it's about eight feet wide. And, um, and at, you know, whichever way you're coming across the, the intersection, you 
as you're driving, you see the phases of the moon in different angles, which is incredible. And the de design behind it, and by the way, that's not me. I would love to take credit for it, but that was not me. <laughs> um, amazing. So, um, so that, and then I've got a few other pictures here. Hold on. This is just when they were kind of putting it together. So there's a lot of things involved. I don't know if you can see this part here. These are all concrete slabs which had to be put in a week before and cemented onto the ground um, just so everything is level. And then, um, yeah, it's just some pictures. But here's a little moon here with the actual structure itself. So you can see, you know, how big it is. I mean, this is my mum. My mum's pretty tall. She's about 5'10", I think. Oh, wow. um yeah so it's 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 really big uh this is when you know they'd come to deliver everything um and uh yeah so the feedback feedback um was i mean it just it was so overwhelming because for me it was like i'm going to put this in north london in an area that i know just to show that this is my religion this is our holy month we are also here we're part of this country and we're really, really, you know, we're great. Like, you know, not just, I mean, young Muslims, we're just doing such great things at the moment and we need to show that. And we need to, um, we need to show that we're part of this country. We're part of this community. We have a great community. We're all doing incredible things. And um, this is just something that will represent us in a really positive light and actually, people will go, our neighbours will, and, and you know, non-Muslims will will drive past and say, oh, okay, it's Ramadan, it's Ramadan, that's great, it's, it's oh, okay, Ramadan, what's Ramadan? And maybe even look into, the, look into it themselves. And um, so, you know, they know every year when Ramadan and Eid is, and I think that's really important for us, it becomes part of their vocabulary, whether it's Happy Ramadan or Ramadan Kareem or Ramadan Mubarak, whatever it is and what, whatever we decide to do going forward, that is part of everyone's vocabulary and um, just showcase us in, in a really great way. Um, so this is just one design, obviously. For me, I would have loved it to have, and I was telling Sadia this yesterday, I would have loved for it to have been elevated. And I was saying that, you know, with the, with the Hanukkah menorah that the Jewish community have, that's, when you see that, you'll, you know that that symbolizes, um, that's Hanukkah. That symbolizes Hanukkah. For us, other than our crescent and star, we don't actually have something that symbolizes us, right? Which is what's, which is something that we can create. Like together we can create, the more um, lights and structures we put around and the more thought that goes into the design, we can actually start to create that ourselves. And again, in a really modern way and that people now look at it and say, oh, okay, cool. That's Ramadan lights. That's Ramadan. That's their holy month. This is what they do in that holy month. And there's so many things that can be done around it. So many, you know, whether it's interfaith iftars or hosting iftars or hosting events, hosting arts and culture events, you know, um, representing the creative Muslims around the country. Like there's so many ideas that, you know, we can, there's so many things we can do with it. Um, so really it's, um, I just, my vision here and our vision, you know, for, and I'm hoping that, um, I've said enough for you guys to want to be, uh, uh, well, to be interested and want to join inshallah, um, on this journey that I think it's, it can be actually not, I, I think this is going to be something really big. Um, I know it's going to be something big. I think it's something so positive. And I think with the right people, um, you know, uh, behind us and, and like we can do something together in such a beautiful way that represents us really well. And, um, and yeah, I really hope that, um, I really hope I've inspired you all. And, and like I was telling to my family and friends, you know how Akon is lighting up Africa? We can do the same in the UK. So. <laughs> and take it, take it worldwide, by the way. Um, so, yeah, please, uh, I would love any questions or anything. Yeah, no, for sure. Thank you so much for that, Aisha. I think 
I'm not the only one who says this, but I feel really inspired. And I know that I live like 10 minutes away from these lights. <laughs> I'm really kicking myself that I haven't come to see them yet. Like, it's really annoying. So inshallah, I'm definitely going to pop by the next week or so um, and just check them out. I think one thing that I really loved was uh, at the beginning how you said that it was like your experiences abroad of living in like Muslim countries where Ramadan is really celebrated. Uh, and then like obviously here in the UK and also mo- like most Western countries, like Islam is just kind of like a part of our way of life, like more generally, like it's not the religion around which society is built. Um, so I've had friends who've gone abroad and studied and they've always spoken about how like Eid or Ramadan is just so much more special in places like Palestine, for example. So thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I think it's truly inspiring um, and, and just such an amazing way to kind of instill that here in the UK. Um, and you're definitely right. I think even like the community of North London, uh, like I, I know the masjid really well. Um, I know the imams there really well as well. Um, and they're super supportive. The whole community is really supportive. So it's really nice to kind of see everyone coming together. Um, yeah, go on. <laughs> By the way, I, f- I forgot to say, and I've literally got it in my notes here. It's the back of Ramadan lights. Um, so I don't know if you're aware, but there's an influx of refugees that have come into Barnet. And um, opposite where the structure is, there's Holiday Inn Express uh, on the corner. Mm -hmm. And um, a really kind man, Syrian man, had come to help us actually build out the structure. And um, so I was speaking to him in Arabic. And actually, my Arabic's really broken now, which is really bad. But anyways, I was speaking to him in really broken Arabic, but we we, we could converse. (laughs) Um, And um, it turns out that there are about 150 refugees living in Holiday Inn Express. Mm -hmm. And he had asked me um he had said look you know this is really amazing what you're doing you're obviously muslim it says happy ramadan um like there's about 33 muslims here that are living here and the food isn't great um and um they are all middle eastern and they're receiving um kind of spicy pakistani food um and uh they would they would like some iftar so if you could do anything or speak to anyone and 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 do something about it please you know so i took his number spoke to my mom we then spoke to the local mosque i I, i'm assuming you're talking about north finchley mosque yeah (laughs) Mohammed. him or that's it he's a great (laughs) guy he's like he's like the hookup for north london yeah yeah. (laughs) (laughs) so so so, um you know went to imam hamid and uh now it's SubhanAllah, honestly, the way things work, we've um, every day, so Imam Hamid, he set up a telegram group and there's been families every day on the, on a rota cooking for the oh. refugees every day. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so again, when I mean like something like the lights, which I had no idea what the feedback was going to be. For me, it was like, I'm just going to put this here and this is North London. This is, I know this area, you know, um, I mean, alhamdulillah, like what's come out of it, uh, it's just it's just something else, uh, something else I definitely didn't uh, expect. Definitely, no, mashallah. And that's the thing, it's all about community building, isn't it? Like one initiative can lead to another one um, and essentially just enrich and touch so many people's lives. That's amazing. <laughs> I'm just looking through our comments and I think this is someone called Akian, uh, but she's underneath her work. <laughs> uh, Microsoft Teams right now, which is hilarious. Um, but here's what she says. She goes, the light installation looks amazing, mashallah. Itching to jump in the car right now. Uh, again, I would definitely recommend that you do so. Um, is there anything you wish you had known before starting this initiative? Like if you could go back and do it again, uh, you know. Um, so there was, so firstly, at the beginning, I was kind of torn between whether I do the first one in North London, or I do it in Westminster, uh, in Park Lane. Yeah. So I actually had the permission to do it for three days in Park Lane, for three days of Eid in Park Lane, or three days of Ramadan. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the full 30, na- full 30 days would have meant I had to apply for planning permission. So one thing is time. I definitely needed more time on my hands. That's for mm-hmm. sure. Um, the second thing is uh, definitely in terms of costing um, and in terms of money. So alhamdulillah, we were able to fundraise, but it, we were cutting it fine. We were really, really, really cutting it fine to the extent where we had, where we started to engage um, Muslim run businesses, but those Muslim run businesses wanted their name on it. Um, 
So that was a, that was a really difficult decision to make because it's not for me. It wasn't an advertising space. This is this is a community initiative. We've already raised just under ten thousand pounds from the community. We now need that push for six thousand pounds more. And because I didn't have the time on my hands to really push out, push it out, had I'd had that year, it would have been easy. Um, but also because it was done in such a short space of time, I think we could potentially get the cost down uh, for the actual structure itself. So maybe it wouldn't have to be as expensive next year. Also bearing in mind that we have the design now. So okay, we might not want to use the same design next year, but we have it for, I don't know, if it's another site that we want to do somewhere else, for example, like we have that, we've paid for that. So it's it's an investment, right? So, um, so yeah, maybe the actual building out of the structure we could get for cheaper and get more quotes from other people. I just didn't have the time to do that. So th the main thing really was time. The pr council process was really easy and really smooth. So but it does differ from council to council. So I guess for next year, inshallah, and, and we want to add, you know, a few more sites. Um, we want it to be steady growth, by the way. We don't want to go like, you know, too hard <laughs> next year where, you know, we can't cope. Um, so, you know, even if, if it's adding four, four, four extra sites next year, um, we'd have to start engaging the council now well after Eid I think just because we we don't want to have any any issues and there there might be some issues like with the power supply it was a bit of an issue but I managed to just kind of charm my way into the power <laughs> supply so. soft diplomacy skills always handy <laughs> um so yes I think the costings uh, I think the time and I think definitely social media. I mean, like, like I started this uh, initiative last year called Hearts for Palestine, and it was um, I had managed to get I designed some masks, managed to get them donated from some someone in up north, and started just selling them throughout the last ten days of Ramadan. And we had raised about ten thousand pounds in in about a week in about a week, right? And we were posting them out like my kitchen was like a production. Um, <laughs> And that is when I realized the power of social media. Mm. Now, this isn't a charity. So this is different because this is uh, more of a community, uh, more of a community project, right? However, people do buy into it. They just need the time for you to explain it to them and buy into it. So I think it's mainly just time and, and, and money, basically, which it always is. Isn't it? <laughs> every, every single project manager knows that, right? Cost, time effort great fantastic yes. <laughs> no that's amazing i think we've had a few other questions come in um like previously as well so i think one of the questions we had was um what's some advice that you would essentially give to someone looking to set up their own community project because i know with a lot of our scholars they're very passionate about their own ideas about kind of putting things into action um so what's kind of some advice that you'd be able to give them Guys, don't wait. Just do it. <laughs> don't even wait. Like you'll learn. You'll learn along the way. Like I've done so many of like small initiatives, right? Where you know it's 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 made small differences, absolutely. But it don't don't fixate too much on planning, planning, planning. Obviously, plan to an extent, but just execute and do, and you'll learn along the way. And the most important thing is to learn from those experiences and grow from those experiences. So, you know, like I said, with with a lot of things with Ramadan lights, there's a lot of a, a lot of teething issues that I'm going to iron out this year. So, definitely, definitely do that. Um, make sure you just do and just act on it. Um, and the second thing is definitely have the right support around you. Um, and that might be hard, by the way, to see because like for me for example i see the best in everyone and especially when it comes to muslims in my community you always want to you want to trust everyone but just make make decisions that benefit your initiative and benefit you only um and just make sure you're aware that you know people might have business motives where you know makes them money and stuff like that so just be aware of that and make sure you have the right people behind you and the people that you trust um for me that was my family uh i mean yeah and then of course i told you about this other other really kind man called muhammad jaja who was just great um 
And uh, yeah, I think that's the two things really. Just make sure you have a good solid team around you and just just if you have if you have an idea, just do it, test it. It's all about trial and error. It, this was trial and error for me, by the way. This was pretty trial and error for me because I did a great job. <laughs> did that, right? But um, like it could go any way. But again, for me, this was trial and error. It's been an idea. Like I said, it's been there for a long, long, long time. And it took me now at the age of 29, I, I'm still young, I know, but <laughs> to actually do this when I could have really done it 10 years ago when I, when I had the idea and it could have been even bigger now. So just make sure you act on it and inshallah, you know, like, like I said, with, with the will of God, um, you know, you'll be fine as long as your intentions are right. Definitely, definitely, inshallah. Um, I think the next question then is, what is the big plan with Ramadan nights? Like, where do you guys see yourself in five years? Like, what's the next location? I'm asking for like really like uh, like sneak peeks, such like spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> I have lots of ideas. Um, and um, okay, so the vision is right is to have Ramadan lights in some way, big or small up in every green space around the UK. So whether that's a Muslim area, a non-Muslim area, wherever it is, in every green space around Ramadan and Eid to have that around. Um, I would love to put it up on Oxford Street and have Christmas lights as Eid lights uh, for three days of Eid. That would be really great or maybe Ramadan. That is a goal. Um, that would be a really amazing goal. Um, but that it, that will come later, right? That we have to be able to prove that, you know, we can do this in a really classy, sophisticated manner and do it in a really, it, just do it really well to be able to then approach, uh, you know, Oxford Street, get, I don't know, the council there and, and actually <laughs> ask for that, right? So that is one of the goals. Um, the vision, again, to roll this out across the UK. Um, by the way, I've had lots of interest from Europe asking me how they can replicate it in, in their country so, and in their city. So that's like really amazing. South Africa, America. I mean, I've literally had messages from all over. So um, there's definitely like a huge gap for something like this. Um, so the vision can really be, be whatever you want it to be. I would love to host events around it uh, eventually, some sort of arts and culture events, um, you know, supporting um, young Muslim creatives in the space and showcasing their work and their art in some way in like a maybe like a festival type of thing. Um, that's one idea. And the final idea is, uh, and I don't know if anyone knows of this, but I was I was mentioning it Sadia yesterday, which was a, a, like a light show. It, it sounds ridiculous, but actually in practice, it's not that. Um, uh, there's They do this Christmas light show at Kew Gardens every year. And uh, it's really, it's beautiful. You kind of walk through the gardens and, you know, there's loads yeah. of different artists. Have you, have you yeah. been? No, it's I've a, never been, but I've seen it in like photos on like Instagram. I'm like, wow. So so I go every year with my family and tickets book out oh, within nice. seconds. Yeah. Um, every year it, it uh, sells out. So other than the Ramadan project, I feel like we don't have things. OK, I know Ramadan is not a time to, you know, like uh, you know, socialize and stuff. Yeah. Fine. Mom tells me that every day, but it's still something nice to do with your family and your friends to go one evening evening before iftar or, off, or on the weekend, for example and go and um, you know walk through a beautiful garden with 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 just really beautiful lights that, rep that are representing our our religion in, in a really nice way and done in a really you know classy way so that's the vision and um, you know open to uh, like like I said this isn't my project this is our project so we'd love to hear everyone else's thoughts as well yeah no definitely and sure may Allah reward your efforts and make you more more and more successful <laughs> I mean um so I think the last question that we'll kind of end on uh is how can people get involved so like you know you've said obviously social media is one area uh, but is there any other way that people can get in touch or uh work towards kind of replicating this in their own area so yeah how, how can people get involved 
Yeah, absolutely. So um, our website is currently under, uh, well, it's currently being done. So it should be done in the next few days, inshallah. So that is ramadanlight.co.uk. Um, you'll be able to uh, fill in the form which you can send and that will come directly to us. Um, there's also our Instagram Instagram page, which is at ramadanlightsuk. You can DM us and we will respond. There's also my personal email, um, which is uh, Aisha Desai 91 at gmail.com. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I can write that somewhere in here, but um, uh, yeah. There. there we go. The best... Putting it in the chat for you. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> right. There we go. It's actually at gmail.com. Sorry. Oh, Gmail. Wow. Yeah. Sorry. It's Ramadan. No, I can't. No, I can't read. <laughs> I can't miss it either. <laughs> yeah. But if you, if you message us through, uh, uh, Instagram. We also have a Facebook page, which is oh, nice. Ramadan Lights UK. So uh, you can also contact us through our Facebook page. Um, so Facebook, Instagram, my email, and the website will be done by the end of, well, by mid next week, basically. Amazing. That's fantastic. What I'll do is I'll also make sure that that kind of goes out to uh, all the attendees and also all of our scholars and obviously everyone who's attended today. Um, I don't think we have any more questions. Uh, so I think we will finish up. But thank you so much for your time, Aisha. Thank you so much for coming through. Uh, I'm sure everyone's really enjoyed listening to you talk about Ramadan lights. Um, and like I said before, may Allah put immense barakah in it. And hopefully, yeah. hopefully we can all just kind of get involved and pushing us forward. Inshallah. Inshallah. <laughs> thank you all so much. Thank you for having me. And I hope to hear from you all soon. And I hope you are feeling inspired. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Awesome. Take care. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum.